focus Satan is trying to pull some of our congregation from us. Okay? And I feel that it's our responsibility to rebuke that spirit. Okay? I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. It's our responsibility to rebuke that spirit that is drawing. I, 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 I was sitting back the other night and I was thinking of the ones that just came through this church and that spirit came in and whenever that spirit comes in it begins to cause confusion. It begins to cause confusion as it begins to cause confusion then things begin to take place, things begin to happen in people's mind. And Satan opens up the, the, the mind. He opens up to where that he can say, now, now I've got to the point that they will listen to me. They will hear what I've got to say. And the first thing he's going to say is, you know what, the people that are not care anything about you, why are you going down there? That's right. Why do you want to go to a church that every once in a while and whenever you go in and, and you seem like you've been hiring a cover, carrying a burden, and you go into the church, oh yeah, you may get a blessing. But you know that people don't care whether you get a blessing or not. Amen. And then God begins to deal with our hearts. And then the devil begins to pull. It's the, it's the nature of God. And it's the nature of Satan. Mm -hmm. Whenever we can discern the difference between the two, when we can take and tell you the devil, devil, that's you. I know when you're trying to talk. And whenever Jesus begins, the Lord begins to talk to us, and he begins to tell us something, immediately we discern that spirit. And we say, God, we know that's you. We know that you. We know that you're the living God. Until we get to the place that we can discern the difference that the devil's going to come in, he's going to break up every time that you get established a little bit. The devil's going to come in, he's going to break it up. You know, we're going to be tried. Uh, Shannon said something a while ago. Sometimes we're going to be tested. Sometimes you say, no, God don't test us. Yes, he does. God don't put the trials and the tribulations a lot of time on us. A lot of times we bring them on ourselves. A lot of times we bring the problems on ourselves. And a lot of times whenever the problems come on, we begin to blame God for them. You ever done something you know you've done wrong? Amen. Yeah. You have to you have to pay the penalty. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had a demon whenever that, that you've done wrong and immediately you knew that you've done wrong? Yeah. And you begin to say, God, why don't you put this on me? Are you going to stand for God? Or what are you going to do? Tonight, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn. I may not hold you very long tonight. I got uh, I got a total, total problem. I don't know if y'all can notice that or not, but I'm not talking just like I used to do. <laughs> but I wanted, to, I wanted to frame this to God laid this on my heart the other night, and I began to, I began to read on this. And, and uh, I'm going to ask Mike, if you don't care, to, to do some reading for me tonight. Mike, can turn to the 12th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. And I may stop you. I may, I may stop you. Just, I do, just hang loose and we'll pick you up again. But in the, in the, in the, in the book of Jeremiah, the 12th chapter, <clears throat> starting in the first verse of that, that chapter, I would like to start reading. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me walk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? That, that deal very treacherously. How many times? How many times have we looked? I, 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 I don't know. Has, has anybody been following the election? And then say, you know, I, I, I begin to think a lot of times about our world, the, the, the change that can happen in our world. I don't know about anybody else, but I look, I look out ahead of time. 
and I begin to see what could happen and what might happen. I begin to think about the uh, the things that go on in the world. The other night, uh, I, there was one of the, the announcers on TV, or, or one of the, uh, the, the other broadcasters who was talking, and they was in this city, and they were they were interviewing people. They were interviewing people, and they begin to talk to them about different things of the world. And uh, I begin to, as they begin to do this, they begin to ask some questions, simple questions, things that we ought to understand. See, this thing about God is something that a born-again Christian, a believer in Christ, will automatically, we will begin to pick up on it, and we will begin to understand how that God works, how that God is, and what He is. And I begin to notice these people, and, and this announcer, he asked some of them, he said, do you know who the President of the United States is? And you know, and, and whenever that, I, you know, we, we form opinions. We, we form opinions. That's our nature, is to form opinions about people before we ever know anything about them. Have you ever done that? I know everybody in the church has, and I've done it myself. And then as they, whenever that they begin to ask these people these questions, whenever you see them, you could see the appearance of the people, and you knew by the appearance of the people that they was not, they wasn't doing to know nothing about what it was that he was going to ask them. Stay with me. And as he began to ask them questions, simple questions, about, the, about who's, the, who's the president of the United States, they would sit there and they'd look at the sun and they'd look around and they wouldn't even know what, what the president of the United States was. You say, people in the United States, are that silly? What I'm trying to tell you tonight, we are living in a world that is treacherous. We're living in a time right now that we're walking in the place where God cannot move in the, in the people that profess Him. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is people today, and we were talking about it this morning, there is people today that they get it behind the Bible stand to preach about God, to preach about Jesus Christ, and they don't even know who He is. They have no inkling of what Jesus Christ is. They went to some seminar, they went to some place and got a high education to make a high dollar of their living, and they know nothing about the Lord and say Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, whenever people get into that place and they begin to live in a treacherous life like that, my friend, something is fixing to take place. Uh, God is going to come in uh, and He's going to bring you to your point that you need to be. Amen. Now listen to this. Go ahead, Mike. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow. Yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near their mouth and far from their range. Whoa. Now what did I just say? What did I just repeat? People today, there is so many people that is professing Christ. There is so many people that are out there today that wants to tell you about God when they know nothing at all about Him. All they know is what they read in books. All they know is about what they picked up the computer and punched in and got it up like. Whenever you know Christ, I'm going to tell you something about Get this in your mind. When you really know Christ and you understand Christ, there is something from down deep in here that comes out that don't come through book language. There is something that comes out from down inside of you that happens that you cannot explain. Nobody else can explain. All you know that all of a sudden there is something that begins to take place down inside of you and you begin to live in a life that's different than you've ever lived before. Now listen to this. Go ahead, Mike. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me, and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them all, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. Oh. Ooh. Hallelujah. Yes. Shannon made the point comment, Father God. What did that scripture just say? Thou has tried. Thou has tried. Have you ever been tried? I'm not talking about going through some kind of tribulation. I'm talking about whenever God sees you begin to kind of fall back a little bit. When God begins to see that you're not praying like you used to. When God sees you begin to think, well, I'm not going to go to church today. I'm going to stay at home. I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do that. 
and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And God looks at me and says, look, if this person begins to go through some kind of hard tribulation, is he going to be able to stand whenever that you, whenever that everything else is falling right now around his mind, around him? Is he going to be able to stand? God sits back and he begins to say, I'm going to give you a little testing. Amen. I'm going to try him just a little bit. I'm going to see if he's going to hold on whenever everybody else has give up. I'm going to see if he's going to bring you to the point that you need to be. And I begin to see God and he begins to try us just a little bit. Now listen to this. Go ahead, Mike. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? For the wickedness of them that dwell therein, the beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, He shall not see our last end. He shall not see our last end. Hallelujah. Why can't we get our minds on God? Why can't we get ourselves to the point that whenever that we ask God for something, that we believe that He will do it? How many times have you seen people and, and they, they begin to ask God, they'll say, will you do this? Will you pray for a certain thing? Will you pray for a certain thing? And as then we begin to pray and God begins to give that certain thing that they ask for. They begin to consume it. They begin to take it and say, God, I thank you for what you've done. And then they will turn their back on Christ and walk away. Amen. And they will turn their back on, the, on Christ and walk away. Now this is the verse that I wanted to get to. Now listen to this very closely. We're living in a time, before we read this, uh, we're living in a time right, right, right now like we've never lived in this world before. I don't care what anybody says, we're living in a civilization of people right now that the civilization of the world is bigger than ever been before. It is overpopulated. The world is overpopulated with people on this earth. God has more to work with now than he ever had before. And the devil has got more to work with now than he ever had before. He's got more things that he can throw at us now than he did 25 years ago. 25 years ago, you didn't hear the things that you hear up to that. You didn't hear about the drug heads, uh, the dope heads, and the people that go out here and blow your brains out for 15 cents. Uh, you didn't hear that. Uh, people had respect for one another. But we're living in a world today where that is history. We are living in a world today where that, uh, uh, believers in Christ, uh, you can call yourself a Christian or whatever you want to do. You know, to be called a Christian is to be Christ-like. And you know what? We don't have a bunch of Christians in the world today. We don't have a lot of believers in Christ today. We have a world that is full of stuff that is unthinkable. 25 years ago, if you have told them what the world was going to be today, they would have laughed at you and mocked you and said, you don't even know what you're talking about. Amen. But here we are tonight. Here we are tonight. A few sitting in this church. And we have claimed ourselves. And I believe that the people are here are believers in Christ. Okay? I believe that we are believers in Christ. I believe that we believe that Christ is the Son of God. I believe that we know who He is. Uh, and we understand through faith uh, and through grace what it is that He has done for us. We're living tonight and we take for granted the things that God has given us. We take for granted uh, the things that God has given us. Whenever we can come to church uh, in the summertime uh, and sit down in the church uh, with a cool uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, whenever you can sit down, you're not hot, you sit down. The church fans is something that is unheard of. Uh, whenever that we come to church in the wintertime, uh, when it's 20 below zero, and we can sit down in the church uh, and sit down with short sleeve shirts on and feel comfortable, we don't understand what it is that we've got. Uh, what we need to understand that. Uh, is that one of these days uh, this thing is going to get worse uh, than it was 25 years ago. We as we are believers in Christ, uh, well, I'll tell you what we need to be doing. Uh, we need to be on our knees before God, getting everything that we can get. Uh, we need to get to the place uh, that we can say, God, I'm going to hang on to you. I'm going to claim the blood. I'm going to believe that you're the Christ. Yes. Amen. Now listen to what it says. If thou has run with the footman. If. Wait a minute. If. If. Hallelujah. Let's talk about that little word if. If. 
You may not be a born again Christian. I'm talking about people that has understood and has given their heart to the Lord and has dedicated their life to God and said, God, I'm going to work for you. I'm going to live for you. Whatever it is, I'm going to do for you. You know what? When you came to the altar and you begin to ask God to forgive you your sins, you know what you begin to do? You begin to make promises to God. I don't care who you are tonight. Everybody that went to the altar to give their heart to the Lord, before you left that altar, you said, God, if you will save me, if you will forgive me of my sins, I'll do anything that you want me to do. Hallelujah. I know I did. I know I did, and I believe everybody in this building, whenever you went to that altar, or wherever it was that you gave your heart to the Lord, whenever that you said, God, I'm going to forgive me my sins, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do, I'm going to dedicate my life to you until everything got to go in the wrong way. Hallelujah. If. What does it say? If thou hast run with the footman. All right, if you have been in the church, I'm going to put it this way. If you've been in the church, if you've been working for God, and you seem like that, that you just uh, just on fire for God. How many people remember whenever you gave your heart to the Lord? You wanted to win everybody that you could. You wanted to win everybody that you could to the Lord. That was one thing that was on your heart. Man, I have found the Lord, and I want everybody in the world to have what I've got. This is ill. If what? If thou hast run, run with the footsman, and, and they, they have worried thee. thee. <laughs> Look Ooh. out there. Whenever you're in the church, and as you're in the church, and you're in a, in a high-pouring spirit of the Lord, and God is moving in your life, and boy, everything is going good, everything that you just talked to the Lord about, God comes in, and He takes care of it, and you're running with the footsman. You're out there doing with uh, everything. Uh, and then all of a sudden the devil begins to come in. Uh, and he says, you know what? Uh, that old sister that sat over on the, on the second seat, uh, she turned around every once in a while. Uh, and she gave me a funny look. Uh, I said, something about that old lady I just don't like. And Sammy, you know what I'm saying? You're running. You're wondering with the footstep. But I'm going to tell you tonight, Jeremiah knew what he was talking about. Whenever possibly God came to him, he said, listen to me, I know, I know without a doubt that the day I'm living in is pretty good. The day that I'm living in right now is pretty good. The day that you're living in right now is pretty good. It's going to be really fine. But to my dude, I'm going to tell you something. There's a time coming when everything is not going to be as good as it is right now. I'm not going to get up here and preach a word to you and tell you that everything is going to be perfect in your life as long as you live and you give your heart to the Lord and you spend and you become a believer in Christ. I'm not going to tell you that everything is going to fit right in place every day that you get up and every day that you wake up, everything's going to be fine. There's going to be times whenever you go to bed, you're going to go to bed worrying about some kind of problem that has came up that day. You're going to worry about the problem that's going to happen tomorrow. There's going to be times that things are not going to be as good as it was yesterday. Amen. If we worry, read that again, Mike. If thou hast run with a footman, if thou hast run with a footman, and they have worried thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, look out. I'm not going to stand and tell you that the bad times is not going to come. Hallelujah. Everybody wants to preach that everything is going to be perfect. I'm going to tell you tonight that goes against the whole wrong nature. It goes against everything. I'm telling you tonight that what you need to do, you need to get your heart and your self ready for it. I'm going to tell you the time is coming when it's not going to be as easy as it is today. Tonight we can sit in this church with liberty. We can sit in this church with freedom. We can sit in this church tonight and if we feel like raising our hands to God and begin to give Him praise, there is nothing going to 
to be said about it. Nothing's going to be said. They're going to begin to worship you with you and push you forward. But I'm going to tell you today, there's a time coming when you're not going to be able to do that. There's a time coming whenever that we're going to have to struggle for everything that we can get. There's a time coming whenever we're going to have to settle down and say, God, whenever the horses come, I want to be ready to run. Even though it's bigger than I am, I want you in my life that I can take and what it is that you're going to put on me and what's coming and I can run with the horseman. Hallelujah. It's time when we woke up. It's time when we understand this God that I'm serving. You know, I, I preach God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a God that looks down. You know, if you're waiting for His mercy, think about it tonight. Where would you be? But He's also a just God. Hallelujah. Look back over your life. I've heard, I've heard all kinds of testimonies. And especially in a lot of the people that is in this church, I've heard the testimony. I've seen the lives. I've seen how lives have changed. I've seen how things have happened. My friend, let me tell you something tonight. What if? What if? What was that said? I go, what if? If you run with the whole, with the, with the first one. If you run with them. If you've been in the church. If you've done that. Not everybody's going to give their heart to the Lord. See, I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I don't, not everybody's going to heaven. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Not everybody's <clears throat> going to go to heaven. Even those that have come in to know Christ, there's a lot of them that have turned their back on Christ and walked away from Him. Amen. They give up on God. If you've been with the footsteps, if you've been in the church, and you begin to get back away from God, you're going to say, God, I don't need you. I can make it just as good on my own. I can make it just as good by myself. I don't need God. There's a bad times is coming. The bad times is coming. Things are not going to look as good tomorrow as they did yesterday. Things are not going to be today like they was yesterday. And a week down the road, they're going to get worse. But thank God. Thank God that we know where our source is. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know tonight where your source is? Amen. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you tonight? My friend, it's not going to be a picnic. But we are the ones that are carrying the banners. Right. We're the ones that are supposed to be telling the world about Jesus Christ. We're the ones that needs to be standing up and waving the banner. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think about this, and I don't know about y'all, but even today, I'm far up right now. I'm far up right now for one thing. Knowing that we're going to have a revival here. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a revival. And I'm telling you, if you're out there tonight and, and on YouTube and you can begin to pick us up, I want you to get this thing ready. If you've never been in a revival where that you can feel the presence of the Lord, where God would move, where people got healed, where people got revived and, and begin to understand that, that they have run with the footsman and they're ready for the horses to come. Amen. This is the way to get there. Hallelujah. We're fixing to have a reminder. Think about it tonight. I want everybody in this church starting right tonight to start praying for this revival that we're fixing to have. You know what? I, I think about the times. You know, I've, I've been in a lot of revivals in my life. And I remember times whenever the Spirit of God would come into a revival and revive everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to stop. I'm going to request this. And I want you all to do it. Start praying for this revival. Amen. Find somebody that you know that is sitting in a dead church that don't know nothing about God. That's been taught everything and has never felt the presence of God. I want you to think about it. It's somebody that, that, that are good people, moral, good, standing people, but they don't know the presence of God. I want you to get somebody in your mind that you know is like that. And I want you to get them to this revival. Somehow or another, I want you to be able to talk to them. Say, I want you to come to this revival. Get them here one night. Get them here one night. 
If you know somebody that's about to give up on God, if they have run with the, Lord, with the footstool, if they've been in church at one time or another, and now they begin to pay back, I want you to get the people to this church. I want you to get them here. And I believe this revival will be an uplifting thing too. Amen. I believe they'll get their minds on God. Amen. I believe they'll get back and say, I've been revived. I've been revived. Why? How? Through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've been redeemed Amen. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever they read this revival, and I'm going to believe it, whenever they do, they'll say, you know what? I enjoyed it. And I, I said, I got something at that church that I never got in my else. And you know what? I believe that this will begin to build our church. People will begin to come in and say, Amen. I want to be part of that. I want to be part Amen. of this thing. You know, I preach a different message than most people. I do. I see the world different than a lot of people. That's okay. I see a world today that is hungry for God. Amen. I see people today that is hungry. You know what? Whenever we go out to look out into the church world, the church world I'm talking about, the the the, the all the denominations and everything, people are what? They're starving for the truth. Amen. They're starving for the word of God. They want somebody to tell them the truth. They want somebody to stand up and tell right's right and wrong's wrong. The world is hungry. The Bible said they would be. Yes. They said there would be a famine in the last days. That's right. Not for food. Not for that. They would be hungry. They wouldn't want they wouldn't be worried about that. Look at the world today. Amen. The United States wastes more. They waste enough funding, enough stuff in the United States to feed five countries. Amen. Waste. They don't worry about today. But they're not getting what they need. They're starting to death for what? For this. Hallelujah. They need God. They need God in their life. Even though they may not say, I need God, down inside of them, they know they need God. Amen. Hallelujah. I will tell about some of the something out this tonight. But let me tell you something. We're here. We're running with the footsman. That's us. That's us. We're running with the footsman. Let's get ready, because the horses is coming. Hallelujah. They're coming. And whenever they get here, you better be able to run. Hallelujah. The world as a whole is going down. The nominal world, as we know it, is going into the dark. But we're bigger than that. Hallelujah. We, as the believers of God, have a place at the altar of God that nobody else has. We have a place at the altar that nobody else has. Hallelujah. We can bring our petitions to God. We have the right to do it. Hallelujah. We have the right to do it. Why? Hallelujah. You know what? Brother Peter was talking today. We're not second hand. We're not second place citizens. Y'all might be, somebody else might be, be, but I don't believe any of us in this building tonight are second class citizens. Not in the spiritual realm of God. We are the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. That makes me pretty stinking high. That makes me a little better. Now you may say, oh, he, he's judging and everything. That makes me a little better than the old dope that's out here on the street. That makes me just a little bit better than the old drunk that lays drunk every night. That makes me better than the old drunk that comes in at night and won't feed his kids and beats his wife. Yeah. That makes me just a little better than the other things that goes on in the world. You say you think you're better than nobody else, anybody else? No, I'm not any better than anybody else. But I know who God is, and I know what He is. I know the power of God, and I understand what He can do. Hallelujah, I love him tonight. I appreciate him for what he is and what he does for me. 
Yes. Thank God. Y'all hold on. Pray for that revival. Keep praying for that revival. Get people in here that, that, that you know that needs a revival. Somebody that, how many people do you know that used to be in the church and now they're out? I, I'm telling you, I could sit here tonight and probably start talking and I could probably bring you up a, 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 at least at least 50 people that I know right now that used to be in the church that now you can't get them to walk into the doors of the church. Amen. Man, my mind begins to, to just pile up the people. Or that somebody is either hurt them, somebody has said something when they need to kept their mouth shut. And they drove them out. Amen. Come on, people. Let's build a church where people will come in here and say, begin to worship God, and the Spirit of God will be so strong that God will move in this place like you've never seen before. Amen. I believe it. God told me it was going to happen. It's fixing to happen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, it's fixing to happen. All right, fix the clothes. Thank you.